All right, so I just picked up this Husqvarna uh, riding mower. It is the YTH 2348. So it has the Briggs & Stratton 23 horsepower V-twin uh, with a 48 inch cut. It's, uh, uh, it's in overall pretty good shape for being about 10 years old. All right, so there's the engine. It's the Intec V-twin 23 horse, pretty nice engine. Um, I've already disconnected the battery up here and pulled the spark plug cables off. Um, but you can see the flywheel here, it's just, it's just freewheeling here. It's, uh, there is no compression whatsoever. And when I look up underneath and spin, I can feel, okay, the, uh, the crankshaft there is spinning. Um, so I know it's not broken or anything, but... Um, I have an idea of, of what it is, but let me show you how to troubleshoot this. So what I want to see, uh, I know this is just spinning around. What I want to see is what's going on inside before I take all this apart. So I'm going to take the valve cover off and one of the spark plugs off. Looks like a brand new spark plug. This has been fired. So what I want to do, uh, knock the spark plugs off. I want to see if the piston's still moving back and forth, right? Uh, I know this is this is spinning. I just want to see if the um, if the piston is too, and I'm just going to insert this. It's a little plastic uh, uh, straw or tube that comes off of, uh, you know, whatever the brake cleaner or you know parts cleaner stuff. Um, and there it goes. See, it's starting to move out. It's all the way out, and it's moving back in. So I know the piston is uh, is moving back and forth. Let me put this up. Now I want to check the valves. So I'll take the valve cover off. So there's the valves. Let me spin this and see if they're moving any back and forth. Nope, they are not budging. So I know the piston's moving, but the valves are stationary. So the, uh, the valves are not moving, but the piston is. Um, and it gives me a good idea of, of what it is. You know, so. Unfortunately, I have to take the engine off uh, to replace it, take the engine off and uh, take it apart. Uh, but what I think it is, there is a timing gear that is on the crankshaft and it has a key on it, it has a keyway, and that's what contacts with, uh, 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 with the camshaft, right? So. I think the keyway or the key is split off of that, uh, off the timing gear. So the main crankshaft is still moving, it's still rotating, and it's still moving the pistons. But that gear is just freewheeling in there and it's not engaging the camshaft, thus uh, the valves are not moving. So um, I will yank the engine, bring it into the shop, and we'll take it apart and see. Hopefully, that is the only problem. All right, so I got the engine off. I got it up here on the bench. You can see it's already upside down. Um, kind of a crowded bench. Our, uh, our shop is kind of jam-packed right now. But uh, got it all ready. I'm about to take the, the bottom of the block off. Uh, should be nine bolts. One, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, is that ten? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten bolts. Plus you gotta loosen the governor here. And uh, so when you put everything back together, you gotta make sure you have the governor on correctly. Um, and it, it's not too hard. It's uh, there's a bunch of videos on YouTube about that also. But I'm going to go ahead and start taking all this stuff off. Uh, we'll take this bottom piece off and we'll look inside and hopefully my uh, diagnosis is correct. So these are ready to come off. There was 10 of them and they're all the same size and if I'm not mistaken um, when you get the gasket kit for this thing it actually includes uh, 10 new bolts with it um, and you gotta take the governor off here so take that off got that loosened up I'm gonna put a little WD-40 little penetrating oil on it goes and just let it hang there and don't disconnect any of the springs or anything it'll make it a lot easier all right so while you're prying it off it, it is going to be pretty tight I usually get a crowbar or something and you see those little tabs it gives you something to start with and you can start prying it up and now that there's a gap, you can see it's starting to, to come out. There we go. Woo! Parts went flying. Yeah. Keep that where it is. And let me get you a. Uh, better angle here so the good thing we got it off the bad thing I can see some metal shavings right here looks like there's a crack on uh, where your uh, camshaft piston goes in. Okay, so the first diagnosis was a bad timing gear, which is right here. Has a broken tooth, but I was thinking it was going to be the key, and this thing was just spinning freely. But, turns out, okay, we have the bad gear. Looks like we have a bent camshaft if you look at this it's it's kind of warped see the way it's kind of sticking up uh, angling up this way so we got a, a bad uh, timing gear we have a bent crankshaft uh, we have hang on we have a shattered connecting rod there's the pieces and and we have a cracked the oil sump pan and this is where the camshaft inserted in so apparently it cracked off here warped when uh, when the connecting rod hit this shattered and hit it so a little more work than expected but it can be fixed so what I did I took the rods out so that I can get the camshaft out um, take the rods off so that uh, there won't be any pressure 
up here and then you can take the camshaft off um, and take note on these uh, on these rods there's a steel and an aluminum one uh, the aluminum the aluminum rod goes for the intake and the steel goes for uh, the exhaust and mind you this this motor is upside down so this is the exhaust and this is the intake so I was able to uh, you know lighten the pressure there and I took the camshaft off Woo! just slightly bent huh look at that joker and I took the uh, uh, the timing gear off and here it is so it did have a broken tooth if I can, there it is uh, and there's the key that goes into that slot there so that's what I originally thought was going to be wrong with this I was I guess I had high hopes that would have been an easy fix just to replace the key in the in the timing gear but it ended up being a lot worse there okay I took the head off there she blows a lot of carbon deposits on there uh, luckily the gasket looks really good shape so that's good the cylinder looks good in there um, so I pulled the uh, pulled the piston out and overall you can see there's a big chunk of it out but as it goes back um, it doesn't go back enough I don't think there's going to be any blowback um, uh, the rings are in great shape uh, I'm just going to clean off the, the carbon deposits there and I will replace the connecting rod. So, so when you're looking at it, this is number two. One is in there still. Um, and it's the same thing. So one would go in that way. Two goes in this way. Um, And that's about it. I'm going to clean that off. Um, then you take that that rod out of there. You can see the, the C-clips. Pop that on. I'll put the connecting rod on. Then as I slip it in, uh, you know, you got to compress the springs and make sure that you gently slide it in, get it all good and clean, and slide it in without damaging the rings. Uh, they are kind of brittle. If you if you ever if you've ever fooled with one, um, if if they get kind of twisted or you know they they actually break pretty easily. Uh, uh, but that's about it. slowly getting there okay so you see I uh, put the new timing gear on and you can see the key slot there um, there's the old one that had a broken tooth on it right there um, and this key was okay but I like to put a new one on um, now you see the dot that's on the gear tooth right there that should align with the marking that's on your camshaft. Now the camshaft, it came with new pads there. Um, so I put that on there, line up your gear, and that's it. So you can see down inside we've got the new connecting rod, we've got the new timing gear, and we have the new uh, camshaft on it. Here's all the old stuff. And if you look real close, 
you can see a slight bend <laughs> bent the crap out of that thing so there's the the bent camshaft there's the uh, connecting rod and pieces and then of course all the new these are the old pads on there and the old bolts um, all right so got this in today I got this used and it looks like it's in pretty good shape now this oil sump cover everything looks like it's right it's it's on there everything's here um, looks to be in good shape I'll just be transferring uh, your oil drain plug I'll be transferring that over I'll be putting a new filter on it um, the governor linkage looks good um, it has a seal on it and it looks okay but you know I just don't know so I'm going to go ahead and put a new a new seal um, and relatively easy to do uh, and get a screwdriver or whatever make sure you don't put too much pressure on on the aluminum here uh, pop that out and uh, press the new one in so We'll do that, then we'll put the gasket on and, uh, and seal it up. So here's the new gasket. And you can see it's a little beefier than, than the old ones. Um, looks a little beefier there. You can see here what was just uh, around the edges and around the edge here. But on these, they're, it's definitely overlapping here. Uh, it's beefier on On this end there, and came with a set of new bolts. So, so this one, um, we don't put any gasket sealer or anything on it. You just put the uh, the gasket on and uh, and tighten it down per the instructions. We've got, as you see here. It does have a diagram when you're looking down at it to uh, uh, to look at the pattern. You go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So we'll follow that pattern and let's see what's the torque spec on it uh, from a third to two thirds the final torque sequence shown uh, final torque value 300 pounds inches and that's pounds per inch not uh, not foot pounds so, so you can see I just slid it on there Slides right on when you're doing it. Make sure that your your seal here isn't rolling over on the inside. So just gently, gently rock it back and forth. Uh, use a screwdriver or a little needle or something uh, to make sure that the the seal doesn't roll outward on the inside. Uh, looks like everything is going good. There's the governor and what else we'll start the screws and the last deal I'll take this cover off this is for the oil pump we need to take that off and slide this in so following the pattern number one two three four five six seven eight Nine and ten. So I'll start with number one. So
That's got it. Alright, so I took the screws off. You can see it has a little o-ring on it. Um, this is the oil pump. You can see how it rotates around and as it rotates it causes a suction and that's how it got to take this off. Oh. And you can feel it has a slot in there. You slide it in. There it is. It's in place. Now replace these pieces and line this up. There it is. And double check your o ring, but these, they're pretty sturdy. You usually don't have to replace them, but. Uh, if it's if it's brittle and cracked, then yeah, replace it. Otherwise, it's it's in pretty good shape. We'll get those screwed on and to the next step. Okay, we're looking at the other side of the engine here. I think we got a better view. Uh, the next steps we'll be putting. Uh, attaching the governor again and we need to put the uh, push rods in place but that's the trick just make sure that you go clockwise all the way as far as you can and hold it in place there we go and you see it has a little nut on here that should be quarter inch. Yeah. So you can spin it that way, go all the way clockwise, and then tighten this down. Okay, sorry I was cut off there. My uh, battery ran out of my camera, so I charged it up real quick. And while it was charging, I went ahead and put in uh, the rods here, and I'll show you this last one. Now remember, there's, there's a steel rod, and here's an aluminum rod. Let me get you a closer, closer view of it here. Um, so this one's in place. This is the aluminum one. Uh, now remember, the engine's upside down, so this is the, uh, the intake and this is the exhaust. Uh, the aluminum rod goes for the intake and the steel one goes for the exhaust here. And to put it in, if you look down deep in there, let me see if I can get a flashlight in there for you. There we go. If you can see that, you can see the pads that came off of the crankshaft there. Uh, you just insert the rod into that little cup. Make sure it's in place. Let me uh, put this back on the tripod. I can't do this one handed. Let me look in here. Make sure the rod is in that cup. Compress the spring and pop it into place. And there you go, nothing to it. Uh, Alright, so I'm adjusting the valves. Um, you can see, rotate it around until it reaches, everybody says top dead center, but this actually has quite a long range where it's, it's going to be out. I mean, it's not that critical to, to be top dead center, but you can see, you can feel it jiggling here. And kind of surprisingly, I I was thinking the gap was going to be like four thousandths for the uh, for the intake valve and seven thousandths for the exhaust. Uh, according to the manual, uh, it's saying four to six thousandths 
on the intake and the same on the exhaust, four to six. So I'm gonna set this, you know, the, the intake at, at four thousandths for sure, and I might go to the higher end and go six thousandths for the exhaust. Uh, I just feel more comfortable. <laughs> for some reason, it's uh, blowing the exhaust out, uh, having that valve open that little bit more has always seemed to work in the past. But so four to six thousandths, it'll be in spec. But I'm going to go low side on the intake, high side, uh, high on the uh, on the exhaust. So what you do, you have a Torx wrench. Um, This is a 13 millimeter or a half inch for the for the nut, and this Torx is a TX30. Probably could use a 35. I don't have a 35, uh, but this should work. So it's tightening it down. You can see it released all the gap on there. And here's the four thousandths. There we go. So you want it snug, but you want it still be able to move it around, right? But you can feel the drag on it. So I'm going to try to keep it right there. Ah, I moved it already. off a tiny bit. And there you go. So it's kind of a touchy feely kind of thing, but you'll get the hang of it once you once you get it snug. Um, So that's pretty tight, and that's at four thousandths. So I'll rotate this around and do the same thing all the way around, and that's how you adjust the valves. I got so used to seeing this engine upside down, but remember with this with this valve cover, this side has the linkage here, and this side has. It doesn't have the linkage and it has the the engine ID on it. So be sure to remember to connect all this. Alright, so I'll tighten all this down. So I got the the engine mounted and you can see up under here where the clutch and this upper drive pulley slides in. Uh, it's a keyway on the on the crankshaft that slides right in. Just remember when you're putting this clutch in, you can see this rod. You line up the keyway and then line up the rod so it goes through the slot here. And make sure you have it on this side because your cable here needs to pop up through and make sure there's not going to be any interference or, you know, cutting the cable there, pinching the cable, anything, anything like that. And then just put your, put your belts back on. So I'm going to finish cleaning up under here before I 
finalize this. Um, then I'll add the oil, connect the spark plugs, and uh, okay, so the engine is mounted. Uh, the pulley and, and clutch is in shape. It's it's installed. So now we just go back, and the same as same as before. Just go back, make your make your electrical connections. Um, over here, your throttle and choke, and the fuel line there, and. Uh, and of course the spark plugs and after that it should be ready to go and the battery <laughs> but uh, I'll get these connected and we'll crank her up okay I think it's ready to give it a test shot I think I've got everything connected um, Blade's not engaged, slow, fast, chokes on. Looks like I got, oh, spark plug wires. That would help. There we go. There we go. Uh, let's see. I'm going to leave the top off, everything off until I make sure this thing's going to go. It might take a while. I don't see any fuel coming through the uh, coming through the filter yet. Looks like it's running pretty smooth. Um, I'm probably going to run it for a little while at low speed. Uh, just like I'm breaking in the engine. And I, for the oil, I just put the cheapest SAE 30 weight oil that I could find. Because uh, I'm going to run it with that for a while and then drain it and put fresh oil. Just to make sure we get all the little uh, you know, metal fragments or shavings or dust or whatever is in there. Um, I tried to clean it out, but I'm, you know, I'm sure there's probably some still in there. Uh, so just run the cheapest 30 weight I can find, and then give it a change, and uh, and that's it. So that ended up being a little work, but uh, but it's actually pretty interesting to to tear down an engine, and. Uh, the cost out of pocket since this is my own vehicle I'm probably going to keep it um, you know a couple hundred dollars and uh, and I got it going uh, but of course you know if I was doing it for somebody else it probably been a, you know <laughs> a little bit more 
who knows, 500 bucks to get that done. But uh, but that's what will happen if you don't change the oil and, and don't keep it filled. I mean, it was, it was nasty in there. But, uh, well, that's it. If you have any uh, questions, be sure to comment and uh, uh, subscribe to the channel. And if you want to be a patron, uh, I think I will be uh, starting a Patreon site pretty soon. But, uh, but we'll see. Let me have your, let me have your feedback on it. See ya.